uh, you know, Mason. And uh, he's, he has an ashram in Rishikesh and uh, he has been attached to our temple for the last several years. And uh, uh, I'm very thrilled to introduce him and he will be giving a lecture this morning. And also Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, 7.15 to 8.15, we'll have a lecture series. The world and the wise man is the uh, title of the lecture. And I request every one of you to make time to attend the lecture. Swamiji has in-depth knowledge on Vedanta and is very fortunate that he is here. Let us utilize the opportunity. I welcome Swamiji to uh, speak. Ganesh also, which is 
for all public credit shows was the concept that Dogma had given. The whole idea was to gather people together. It did not just remain as a religious function, but it also then served the purpose of making people aware of the British atrocities and leading the championing the cause of freedom struggle even furthermore. Kalidas, Mahakavi Kalidas said that as human beings we are fond of celebrations. Every human being looks forward to celebrate. Festivals are an occasion and festivals provide us this opportunity to celebrate. To celebrate means to express the joy. To celebrate is not to find an opportunity to be happy. To celebrate really would be an opportunity to express the happiness. It means you are not seeking, but you are simply expressing. When we are seeking to be happy, we are bound and when you are expressing, you are free. Therefore, there is this fundamental difference and we have to know that. The word is Utsav. Sava is a form of a ritual, a fire ritual. And Utsava means to celebrate it with more spirit. That is what it would mean as good. If the Hindus are ever asked as what is the basic source of knowledge, you should be able to say it is the Vedas. Don't ever answer that you will have to Google and find out. Which is the Vedas. In the Veda, the final portion of the Veda is called as Vedan. So the word Vedanta means the conclusion of the Vedas. It also means the last portion of the Vedas, the final portion of the Vedas. It also means the conclusion of the Vedas. <coughs> In this concluding portion, that what is the summary or that what is the very culmination of the Vedic knowledge is brought to us and it is also called as the Upanishad. Okay? So the Upanishad has got, the Upanishads have got different name and it is also called as Vedan. But technically, the word Vedan will also cover two more things along with the Upanishad there will be Bhagavad Gita and the Brahma Sutra. This is, this trio is called as the Prasthana Traya. Prasthana means the road, the approach, the way. What is that final way? What is that way to the final liberation? 
just yesterday, somebody had met me at the airport in Dallas. This gentleman walks up to me because of the clothes. People are curious as what who is this. And so somebody walks up to me and asks a question. Will you not like to be like to have salvation? Yeah? Will you not like to have salvation? And I said, no, sir, I don't want to. So the whole discussion falls flat. There is no such idea of salvation. All that we have is liberation, which means freedom. The word salvation means that somebody is required to save you. Some, some savior is there, some dependence is there, you will have to propitiate, you will have to call, and then you will be saved. There is no such idea of saving over here. All that we have is liberation. And this liberation, the different word is, the Sanskrit word is moksha. Okay? That moksha means that we are seeking freedom. What freedom are you seeking, sir? <coughs> when this question is asked, we know that every one of, of us is seeking freedom from someone. Okay? Nobody is seeking salvation. Everybody essentially is seeking freedom. So look at that. What freedom are you seeking? I want to be free from Dukkham. And this is the basic pursuit of every living being. This is the basic pursuit of every living being. That we want freedom and we want freedom from Dukkham from suffering, from every form of misery, one wants to be free. Then it is asked that, sir, how do you seek this freedom? Somebody says that I will seek this freedom through money. When I have money, I will be free from Dukkham. The other fellow says, when I have stable career, I will be free from Dukkham. The third fellow says, when I have a nice girlfriend, I will be free from Dukkham. There can be one more variety. And he says, when I go to heaven, I will be free from Dukkham. Look at that. All of them are saying, seeking. Basically, everyone is seeking freedom. Freedom from Dukkham. The word Dukkham means suffering. How then will, whether it is money or career or a position or anything, will be able to make you free from suffering? And therefore, in the Upanishad, <coughs> now it is going, to, it is said, that those who recognize that you truly want moksha, truly want freedom. And in this pursuit of freedom from Dukkham, na karmana prajaya dhanena tyage na eke amritatva manasho. This freedom, this moksha is attained by a person not through money, not through wealth, not through progeny, not through popularity, then sir, how will this be attained? And the answer is also provided by the Vedanta by saying, when you know, look at that, when you know what is the ultimate truth, what is that reality? What will be free? Now, with this one's dense 
we have a little responsibility to understand it with more clarity. Huh? It is said, by knowing what is that Satyam, you will be free from Dukkham. Then, what, what are you really saying, sir? What is this Vedanta? What does it mean? By knowing the reality, you will be free. We thought that by going to heaven, we will become free. By having children, we will become free. And, you know, I don't have to tell you the story further. Huh? And then, by doing something, getting something, will we be free? I said, no, it is by knowing. And when it is said, it is through the knowledge of that reality of what is the ultimate truth, you will be free. It means that the bondage, the dukkham, is because of ignorance. Look at it. The whole problem of your suffering is reduced to the problem of being of the ignorance. And therefore, ignorance can go away only in the wake of knowledge. Ignorance can go away only with knowledge. Even if you do anything else, you can go to the heaven. We don't deny that there is any heaven and you can never go to the heaven. Whichever heaven that you want to go, we will provide you many more addresses. If somebody wants to go to Vaikuntha, we will tell him that there is this. Somebody wants to go to Kailas Lok, we will tell him how to go there. If somebody wants to go to another Loka, Swarga Loka, or the heaven of the Devi, we will tell him how. We can give you several addresses. But by going to the heaven, etc., the Dukham does not come to the end. By knowing that, Dukkha, knowing that reality, the Dukkham is mitigated, totally annihilated. And therefore, ignorance is the root cause of all the suffering. When this is said, and the flip side is, it is through knowledge, it is through knowing, it is through this wisdom that Dukkham will go away. Then a person is required to be, he, he has to be prepared for the knowledge. You see? If one is not prepared or one does not want the knowledge, the knowledge cannot take place. So there are two prerequisites. One is that the person has to be prepared and he has to want it. If you want but if you are not prepared, then the knowledge cannot take place. You may have the capacity, but you don't want it. <laughs> Over there also the knowledge cannot take place. And therefore, we have to have two things. One is a sincere desire to know. And another one is the necessary preparation. And this preparation is what we say is maturity of life. In order to have that kind of an intelligence which now has the capacity to hold the knowledge is required. And therefore, the way that gives you certain techniques, a method a system to evolve. As a person evolves, then he becomes prepared. As the person evolves, now he has, he develops that capacity. Now you see, and therefore one of the methods 
is called as the upasana. Okay? It is called as upasana. The word upasana means to sit closer. Upasana means yeah? to sit closer. What are you going to sit close to? Now we say that what you really seek, that total freedom is what we call as Parmeshwara. Okay? You understand this? That what is really sought by a person is what we call as Parmeshwara. that a walker does are two different functions but does that make 
the person as two? Are there two persons available or is it just one? Like that, we will have several names, several forms. Whether it is Shiva, Shakti, Ganesha, Surya, Vishnu, so on and so forth. But that truth, that Parmeshwara is one. Now when you are able to bring your heart close to this Upasya to God, then it is said that the Upasana is fructified, that devotion is fructified. And therefore, we have Upasana and we use these festivals, these occasions to invoke this particular upasana in the life of individuals. And therefore, when we are doing these religious functions, it is not only that it is a congregation of people of a particular community, but the whole idea is to lift the individual who participates. So when you come together over here, or whenever you do any form of upasana in this festivities, there is festival, there is going to be a celebration, but now this occasion is used. It becomes instrumental in the evolution of a person. Now you see the whole design of this religious functions is not only so that people can come together and feel good. It is not only so that you can come together and, you know, have some fruits and nice sweets and, you know, wear some nice clothes and meet your friends. That you could do even otherwise. But now this whole design is meant so that your hearts get lifted. So that your intelligence in the whole process gets purified, becomes prepared and prepared for the ultimate knowledge which will set you free. And therefore, you know, this entire system is designed in Hinduism for evolvement of every individual. It is not meant to create more and more people who are just followers. The whole idea is the idea of the of, of individuals evolvement. And where is that evolvement finally taking you? It takes you to that ultimate knowledge which is the cause of liberation. And what is that liberation? Dukkhantam, where all the suffering comes to the end. And therefore now when we are doing this, instead of you know talking etc., if you participate, if you are able to invoke that feeling of devotion, the ultimate beneficiary will be each one of you. And therefore, when we are here in the temple, if we can maintain this discipline, we don't come to the temple so that we can flaunt our clothes, so that we can meet the people whom we have not met for weeks together. Hey, you can do that otherwise also. But use this occasion Use this space, use this time so that you evolve and at the end you arrive, you prepare yourself to receive that knowledge. Whether it is Sri Krishna speaking or a Guru speaking or Shankaracharya speaking. But the whole idea is that are you available there or not? It is said when Bhagavan Shri Krishna delivered his Bhagavad Gita, 
only three people could hear directly. There were thousands of people all around, including Bhishma, Drona, Yudhishthir, all such great people were there. Is not it? Bhishma, etc. What, what shining characters are these? But these people, nobody could hear what Sri Krishna is speaking. Who are the people? Who, who was it? Who was the direct recipient of Bhagavan's words? And it is said, the first recipient is second one. Dhritarashtra also did not hear it directly. Yeah? Okay, Sanjay. And the third one? Uh -huh. The third one who has directly heard as Bhagavan was speaking is Hanumanji who was sitting on the flag post. Uh -huh. He is sitting on the flag post. There are hundreds and thousands of people and yet Sanjaya hears it not because he seeks the knowledge. Dhritarashtra listens to it not because he seeks to know. He is interested in knowing why are the Kauravas losing the battle? What is it that has brought Arjuna what has given Arjuna his strength back? And this is the reason why Dhritarashtra wants to know. And Sanjaya gets to listen to it because Vyasa has blessed him with that power that he could listen. He could see and tell it to Dhritarashtra. Hanumanji listens to it because he is a devotee. He is ready, he has promised that he will be sitting on the flat post. And Arjuna listens to it, hears it, because Arjuna has sought that knowledge. Till the point Arjuna has sought the knowledge, Bhagavan Sri Krishna has not spoken about it ever. Look at it. The whole life Arjuna and Shri Krishna has spent together, but Shri Krishna never has imparted this knowledge to Arjuna. It is only on the battlefield when Arjuna seeks this knowledge, Shri Krishna gives the knowledge. And therefore, if a person is not prepared, he does not ask for it, that knowledge will not take place. As a result, that what is truly sought by a person, that what is being truly wanted by you in life, will be missed by you. And then, at the end of it, we will all be only saying, my life has gone, but I have not got what I have really wanted. What will be left with us is only regret. What will be left with us is only that feeling of hollowness, emptiness. We did everything that was possible. We earned money, we came to USA, we did everything. But finally, what is it? There is, the hands are still empty. And therefore, Please understand the importance not only of festivals but the idea of Upasana behind it. Please understand the importance of the space that you are in. Let us create this temple as a space to be committed to that what is truly wanted in life. Let us not make the temple as a place where we come together and just, you know, like a market space, keep talking amongst us. Respect 
the space, respect that institution, and you will definitely benefit. And hence, in the beginning, I said that as Indians, we all require more discipline. Right? So, in which ways, this is Ganesh festival, Ganesh Otsav. I wish you all a wonderful time, a delightful time, a time to be with yourself, a little time to find your closeness to Ishvara. And then we have these days of puja, celebrations, rituals, etc. I wish every person over here in this town, Fort Worth, Mineral Wells, Palace, everywhere, in fact, every one of us, a very happy Ganesha. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Swamiji. And uh, as I said, we are really fortunate to have somebody who has in-depth knowledge of Vedanta and we could see he's a prolific speaker and has tremendous knowledge. And thank you very much for visiting. And also, again, I want to remind there are going to be lecture series Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, 7.15 to 8.15. The, the title of the speech is The World and the Wise Man. Uh, please come and enjoy the lectures and like Swamiji said, uh, practice Upasana coming closer to the ultimate truth. Thank you.